Hello, Mike here. Today I'm going to show you how to adjust the valve clearances on a Briggs & Stratton motor. Here I've got a Briggs & Stratton out of a John Deere LA145. This is a two-cylinder motor, 22 horse, uh, made for John Deere, but there are all these Briggs & Strattons. They're pretty much the same. The same process applies whether you got a single cylinder or a two-cylinder like this one. Uh, so the first step you want to do, you want to remove the spark plugs. Uh, so to do that, this is just a 5 8 They're all pretty much 5 8 socket. Pull her out. And on a two-cylinder motor, you're going to want to pull out both of the spark plugs. That way you have no compression, and that way we can turn the motor easily. Right, next step, you want to remove the valve cover. Once you have the spark plugs out, uh, these are just a 3 8 inch bolt. I'm a little impatient, so I like using my uh, electric screwdriver here. Pull them out. They shouldn't have that much torque on them. Get these four guys, and we'll see what's going on here. All right, now we got the valve cover off. We get to the fun part. See what's underneath there. So just to give you an overview of what's happening underneath this valve cover is you'll see the push rods. Right here, so you have two push rods. What those do, those ride on the crankshaft. And as the crankshaft turns, the push rods push up on this rocker. This is a valve rocker. And it pushes up, and then it pushes down on the valve on the other side. So this is the valve, valve spring. So as the motor turns, the crankshaft is pushing on these push rods, and then it push downs on the rocker, and the rocker pushes back on the valve. So this is the exhaust, this is the intake. So right now, it's pushing down and it's opening that exhaust valve along the exhaust escape out of the cylinder. And it comes back up and then next, it lets the intake valve on. So it's sucking air in and fuel, creates compression, boom, and then back out the exhaust. So now what we wanna do is that we want to adjust the valves when they're at top dead center, meaning that piston is at the very top of the compression stroke, pushed all the way out. So to do that, Get a long skinny screwdriver, keep her clean, and then just slide it in the uh, spark plug hole. And then you're gonna twist the crankshaft. So essentially you twist the fan on top of the motor. Then you wanna feel where that piston pushes all the way out so you're, you're, to where your screwdriver is pushed out as far as it'll go. When it is, and then you'll feel it start sliding back down. So you push it out. All right, so this is as far as it goes. Now let's feel it. Oh, those are tight. You can't adjust that. So the reason that is tight is because that's on the intake stroke, meaning it's pushing those valves down, allowing fuel and uh, air to go into the motor. So you can't adjust the valves there. So we need it on the compression stroke. So let's twist it again. Cylinder goes to the bottom. Cylinder goes all the way back up top. So there we go, cylinders up top. Hey, we are at top dead center of the compression stroke. So it's creating compression inside that cylinder. And in order to do that, it's got both these valves shut. And while they're shut, that is when we check the valve clearance. Next step, we wanna adjust the actual valve. Now on these Briggs & Stratton motors, pretty much all of them, out of the big box stores, out of your regular lawn mowers, the dual and single cylinders, they all adjust to about 0, 0, 0, 0.005 inch. Uh, the book says 0 0.004 through 0 0.007. I just go 0 0.005 on each side. Now, in order to do that, we're adjusting this clearance here. So you can see that one's awfully loose. Uh, you wanna first loosen up the lock nut on there. So to do that, you take a half inch box in wrench, loosen it up. That one's way loose. And then you take a T40 bit. Now, to save you a ton of time and cursing, I like to put it on a regular screwdriver end with the, with the head on, on the end. That way it gives you a lot more control. So what you're doing here is you're tightening it down till it feels tight, but not too tight. This one's way loose. So there it's too tight, you can't move it. You just wanna back it off just a bit or it's, there we go. And it's, you just gotta play around with it a bit. So that, that feels pretty good where it slides in. You feel that 
restriction there. And then you want to hold that T40 tight as you lock down the lock wrench. Don't let her move or else this whole process gets jacked up. So, there we go. All right. All right, with that, your valves are adjusted. Go ahead and repeat the process on your exhaust valve and the other cylinder. I'm also gonna post a video on a common failure point on these aluminum push rods that uh, cause a lot of issues on these models. It's a failure point that you've gotta be aware of when you're looking at these things. Uh, so with that, I'm out. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe.